The, reviewing your newscast this morning when we came here, you know, they're talking about the safe storage. Someone is being sentenced in Franklin County this morning for uh, her baby getting a hold of crack cocaine. We don't have a law requiring people to safely store their crack cocaine. I mean, we already have a law on point about endangering children. All these tools are already in the box, and uh, the idea that a local ordinance is going to add to that, no, the only one the local ordinances impact are the people that are inclined to follow Let the law. Let me stop here. I'll get your comment right after the okay, break. Well, much more on Capitol Square. By that time, I'll forget it. I cut Mary Ellen O'Shaughnessy off. Going That's to the break, okay. go ahead. Make That's your point. okay. Um, now I have to remember. Let's go back. Uh, about the certain uh, legislation and oh, being... Oh, yeah. oh, we were talking about... Uh, uh, you had mentioned the whole thing about... Uh, um, there's enough rules on the books. Mm -hmm. And I, one of the things that I needed to point out is that uh, the federal government, uh, the 10-year assault weapons ban had expired, yes. right? And then uh, the state did nothing to, to make sure that our citizens were safe from assault weapons. So we felt that we, we felt there was a need uh, to make sure that the people in the city of Columbus uh, had an opportunity to be safe and that our police officers had a tool uh, you know, a, a, a local ordinance in in the absence of the uh, federal assault weapons ban, any state move to to make sure that they've got every every tool that they need in their arsenal to fight the bad guys who tend to have uh, AK-47s and other uh, uh, assault weapons that can fire 60 rounds a minute, uh, that can, as I said, cut through quarter-inch steel. Um, things like that. It's totally unacceptable. Certainly, and a large part of the reason that the federal ban expired was because they did study after study and were unable to find any correlation between the ban and stopping them from shooting at police or, or reducing crime. I mean, like I said, we've already, you say we don't have anything specific to assault weapons, it's because we have a statute that's specific to all weapons. You cannot use them against police. You can't walk out into your backyard and start plinking at cans in the city of Columbus or any other place because we already have a statute. I mean, that, that's kind of what we keep coming back to is is the local ordinances are entirely superfluous to the laws that are already on the book and they're never going to be used to impact the criminals. Has concealed carry, along study after study and statistics, has concealed carry in Ohio helped hold down the crime rate? I think anyone would be hesitant to say one way or the other. I think there's so many factors, and I would like to be able to sit here and say one way or another, it has impacted, it's reduced, it's increased, whatever. But I think in, in a uh, an abundance of intellectual honesty, you have to say that there are so many factors that go into it. Uh, we've certainly had, I think we had our 20th defensive use of a handgun by a license holder within two years, uh, two weeks ago in Cleveland, uh, mm -hmm. according to our account. So it is definitely being used defensively. It's being used the way it's supposed to be. It's not being used to assault people. But as far as for me to be able to sit here and say, yes, it's reducing crime, yes, it's increasing time, I think that would have a component of intellectual dishonesty that have, I'm not have, willing to... Have you had a lot of permit holders violate the law. We talked a little bit about mm -hmm. that earlier, about why you want to clarify the law and, and update mm -hmm. it. But, you know, have we had a lot of, because that was one of the message from the opponents of concealed carry to begin with, was that we're going to have all these people out on the street, and they're all going to have guns, and they're going to open fire, and, and they're not yeah. going to use these weapons responsibly. Have sure, we seen you, that? The, the soccer mom shootouts and all that, yeah, that, that, uh, that did not happen. Luckily, they're not going out and drinking too much Riesling and, you know, getting into <laughs> fun, gun battles at Polaris. But, or uh, smoking at a bar. <laughs> yeah, smoking in a bar. Uh, the, the problems that we have had have been, and this is from like the OSP, uh, Buckeye State Sheriff's FOP, the problems that we do have are car transportation overwhelmingly. When people are getting arrested that have licenses, it is to do with transporting the gun in a car. It's not going in robbing a bank. It's not going into a domestic violence situation. I mean, certainly if that was happening, uh, we have a very active organization here in Ohio that would be making sure that every, uh, every legislator was hearing about those sorts of things. So yes, there are some suspensions and revocations. Overwhelmingly, it's to do with car transportation. I spoke uh, a year ago with Senator Steve Stivers, who's a lieutenant colonel in the, uh, I believe it's the Army National yep. Guard. And uh, he, of course, has a lot of experience handling firearms. And, and he made the point that it's the laws that existed previously was ludicrous. The last thing you want to do is have a gun out you know, loose in a car. If you're carrying, it's in a holster for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go to a, a shooting range, those people, the, the concept seems to be that we're dealing with criminals and gangs and this sort of thing. You go to a shooting range and it's like being at a convention full of accountants. Mm -hmm. These people follow rules, their procedures, they're extremely careful, they're hyper careful about handling the guns. So there's, there's a big disconnect here 
terms of what this law does and who's it, who it's applying to. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to ask you, Mary Ellen, um, one of the things that's been said by uh, the Ohio Municipal League, by Governor Taft, mm -hmm. is that home rule is under attack. Absolutely. So, but then in some of the testimony and in some of the statements on the House and Senate floor, there were lines like, well, the state overrules home rule all the time. You put, the, you know, it <laughs> doesn't allow communities to put up stop signs on I-71, for example. There are reasons to overrule home rule. Well, yeah, may, possibly. I mean, you know, this is a, a, a constant debate, but the Ohio Municipal League says this is a, a continuing eight-year attack on home rule, and I find it rather ironic, Karen, that, that uh, this is happening uh, when you have a, a legislature, both the, the Senate and the House, primarily Republican, and historically Republicans have been about in home rule, about state rights, and, and things like that. And, and, and when you look at the and, number and, and, of Republicans who voted yeah. for this, a lot of well, these were supporters of home rule, typically. Right, right, exactly. And, and it, it just continues. Uh, I heard about one this morning, and then there's also the, of course, uh, um, what was the other one? There, there have been several of them. The, the red, red light, light cameras, cameras. Red and light then cameras. there was another one that they just, uh, they just. Um uh, I mean, it just continues uh, this this uniformity issue. I mean, this all has its place, but where's the balance? It seems to me that we have a legislature that is trying to impose its will uh, on uh, on areas that they don't quite understand. And the governor was certainly sympathetic and certainly on Columbus's side on right, this. So right. I guess as we look ahead, then what's the next step for the city of Columbus, city council, right. and also the mayor? Uh, what will you try to do? Will you have to let this sort of percolate for a while, leave it alone? or what what do you have in mind I don't believe we're gonna let this rest I don't believe that we are charged to let this rest I think that we have to do our best to make sure that people understand the issue and have an opportunity to weigh in on it uh, I, uh, I do understand that the Supreme Court had uh, had a ruling uh, what is about a week before then saying that there was no law in the books uh, regarding uh, um, you know home rule and, uh, and uh, local gun ordinances and uh, and now that there's a law in the books that gives uh, gives us difficulty going back to to the Ohio Supreme Court uh, but what we can do is do the same thing that we did with smoking make sure that people are uh, aware and informed and we have a statewide uh, um, opportunity to have this discussion and see if people can vote on it. Have we seen the last, is this the last bit of firearms legislation now that it's through? Uh, or it, It's not the last bit of firearms legislation, nor is it the end of this of issue, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, which I'd gladly uh, go do something else. Uh, I, I would expect a, a Dayton or Cincinnati or Columbus or Toledo or someone to challenge it in court. That is not unexpected. The Baskin decision, which is what you were talking right. about from two Fridays ago, this legislation was written in anticipation of that decision. We feel it's tailored exactly to it. That doesn't mean that someone's going not going to uh, challenge it. But I think what the law is doing, it's already working because the burdens are back where they belong. It's on the city to go back and sue the state rather than a client of mine to come up with the money to force the issue. The burden is back between the state and the cities to decide it and the expense. As far as future legislation, we still have uh, tremendous troubles with car carry. Uh, there was an unintended change in House Bill 12 that has now made it illegal to transport an unloaded handgun in a car. We've had the first conviction up in Delaware County on that. It used to be that uh, so long as it was unloaded in a case and transported, anyone could transport it. That's no longer the case. People can be charged for concealed carry for even transporting an unloaded handgun to the range and we're already seeing convictions on that so yeah th there's more legislation to come unfortunately yeah, let that is be. that literally true that uh that you can't legally transport to the range now? Yes, Roughly. because under 292312, it used to say you're guilty of concealed carry unless you are legally transporting it in a car. When they imposed the uh, concealed carry changes, they, they withdrew that uh, affirmative defense. All right, we're going to let that be the last word today. My thanks to Ken Hansen from the Buckeye Firearms, Firearms Association. Thank you for Clemson having me. City Council Member Mary Ellen O'Shaughnessy and Karen Kassler and Michael Maurer and I will be back to talk about more of that last-minute legislation down at the State House.